and needed some coins to build that dream team you guys have always wanted, head on over to my sponsor, Buy Madden Coins. They have the cheapest, the quickest, and the most reliable coins on the market right now. Make sure to use code Poodle for 20% off at checkout. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Poodle back with another Madden Ultimate Team video, guys. And today's video is going to be the most overrated players in Madden 20 right now. Now, I haven't done a video like this in quite a while, actually. I've kept up with a lot of other themes and trends I like to continue on weekly. But overrated players I haven't done in a while. Now, the first time I did this, I based it off like 86s to 88s, because at the time, those were the highest cards. So now, with there being the introduction of 92 overall cards, 91s, 90, 90 overall cards, I found it weird to even try and include 86s. Because although, like I always say, I think Ezekiel Elliott is overrated in Madden, his base elite card, he hasn't got a new card yet. But is he really overrated anymore? Because he's a 60, it's a 60k, 86 overall. Like, can I say he's overrated? I don't think so. So I had to revamp the whole initial list and go based off the highest overall cards that are really expensive. Because even if cards have bad stats, they're so cheap at this point, can you even justify that? So I had to change up a lot of things. I think I've come down to a pretty good list of cards. A lot of them obviously fall in the higher 90 range, considering that those are going to be the cards that are overpriced for the most part. So before we get into this video, guys, if you are new to the channel, make sure to go down below, hit that subscribe button. <clears throat> Choking up there. Hit that subscribe button, boys. We're grinding out to 9K. We're getting there. The support's been crazy as of recently. Turn on the noti bell. Comment down below who you think I left off this list or who I should have added to this list. And make sure to drop a like in this video. Let's get this video to 200 likes, boys. You've been smashing the like button. Now let's get into this list. First on the list, a guy that from the moment he dropped, I didn't think much of. And considering his price has went up since... I think even less of now he was the first team of the week boss with uh dalvin cook and that's bradley chubb team of the week card so he goes for 175k he's not horribly overpriced i have seen him for 200k though but look look at his stats he got 82 speed 85 excel 89 strength 85 tackle 87 play rec 87 block shedding 80 power moves 84 finesse moves now on paper he looks pretty good but when you realize he doesn't hit a single threshold most most guys at least has one or two thresholds and that's what makes them special right so if he has the block shedding threshold and the finesse move threshold he's gonna be a crazy pass rusher and a crazy run stuffer but he hits no threshold so at, literally he's average at everything typically what makes a great card is that he's great at a few things and then average at everything else so there's no weakness in this game bradley chubb has no strength but he has no weakness he's kind of just like a cog like he'll just sit there like you compare him to lawrence taylor Lawrence Taylor might be similar in some other stats, but he has the power move threshold, almost the finesse move threshold, and you can get, and is it looking at his sell speed? He has special speed for an outside linebacker, and then he has some thresholds of rushing. It just speaks for itself why there's such a difference in cards there. For an extra 120K, I'd much rather go with Lawrence Taylor, 130K, for the most part. Now next on this list, another guy that just came out. I don't know what it is. I have a few Team of the Week drops on here. I don't know, Team of the Week bosses have been a little underwhelming. I do like Dalvin Cook, but like it's probably this week too. This week kind of killed it with a few of their drops. That's Keenan Allen, 210k, not horribly overpriced, which is why he's not too high on the list. If he was like 300k, he'd be a lot higher on the list. But because he's only 200k, I can't put him too high. But 85 speed, 89 jumping, 90 catching, 89 catching traffic, 85 spectacular catch, 86 short route running, 85 medium route running, and 81 deeper running. Now don't give me this BS of oh on my Chargers theme team he has a 90 speed. Okay, yeah maybe. But that's not them. That's like what the one percent of the community, maybe less. Or don't tell me he does really good in solo challenges, or he plays really good in seasons. If you don't competitively play weekend league and get twenty wins with him, I really don't want to hear that he's amazing. Cause like I, I come close to twenty wins if not get them, and I've used cards just like him. You know, you know what card this is? This is DeAndre Hopkins. Look at them. The speed's a difference by one. The jumping's a difference by two. The catching's a difference by two. Catching traffic's the same. DeAndre Hopkins actually blows him away in spec catch. The short route running, the medium route running by one, and the deep route running is tied. This is a glorified double the price DeAndre Hopkins. I'd much rather have my 89 that was free for me and would be 100k less in theory anyways. So next on the list is a, another team of the week hero. And this one just didn't make too much sense to me. With the middle linebackers they have available to us, I really couldn't fathom why we're getting these types of drops. I think I spelled his name wrong. I think it's Moe's. Right. There we go. So, Team of the Week boss, 271k. So, first off, he's highly overpriced for a 90 overall. Highly overpriced. Now, you compare him to a guy like Shazier. Blown out the water. So, what can CJ Mosley do? He has a tackle threshold, the play rec threshold, and he does not get the hit power threshold, though he's close. 
Now, Ryan Shazier can be chemmed up to get the tackle and play rec threshold first off. Ryan Shazier is way faster. Ryan Shazier has running back speed. Running back excel, he's stronger, and he has a zone coverage. The hit power is not as great, but Ryan Shazier blows him away in what matters from a linebacker. Speed, hit, and zone. Obviously, CJ Mosley has better hit power, but the zone coverage and everything, you can actually leave Shazier alone and he will man for himself and do his own thing. And then even Devin White, who they just dropped, has better hit power, better block shedding, better strength, better excel, way better speed. It just doesn't compare. And the tackling is both threshold. The only thing is play rec. I can't even compare. Like, CJ Mosley isn't even a user. I can't even think about him because of the two linebackers they gave me for free in this game already exceed that of what I would even think to buy. Next on this list is a quarterback who I quite honestly hoped would have been better because I typically love his cards. But sadly, they did not make it better. That is Aaron Rodgers' kickoff card. So, what do you expect from an Aaron Rodgers, right? In my opinion, short, medium, and deep should all be 90s. Minimum, right? 90 over court, at least minimum. And what matters to me most in most Madden games are the middle accuracy throwing stat. And that's for me because I, I play a lot of over the middle 20 yard in passes. I don't, I don't really throw deep, but I don't exactly always throw checkdowns. And checkdowns, again, I feel like any quarterback can make that. What I think matters the most is throw accuracy mid to me. And that is his worst stat. Throw accuracy mid to 84. You can't even threshold it. Yeah, you can get the deep. His speed's not useful. In my opinion, I see I have Lamar Jackson. He can get chased. I, his speed is not useful at 76. 91 throw power is good. The throw under pressure is so important to me too this year because this year, an outside linebacker literally just sheds the left tackle, and your quarterback makes an errant throw. Imagine when they're closer. At least Lamar Jackson has that. Lamar costs way less, and in my opinion, I like him better. The speed alone makes his game changing. People have to put QB spies on me. People can't cover. People are scared of him. The throw power sucks, I, I get that, and the short accuracy, but the medium accuracy is not too far off. The deep accuracy is whatever, and then the throw under pressure and the, and the play action, like, he makes up for it in other ways, and I'd much rather have a 90 speed than all those other stats, because Aaron Rodgers is missing the one stat that I care about. Next on this list is a guy that, I hope no one even tries to argue this one, Eddie Jackson. He does have a Redux card now, so it kind of makes up for it a little bit, because he's going to be a lot cheaper. But prior to this Redux card, he was going for what, like a million coins? You see one right there for 915k. Even at 400k, right? He's got 83 speed, 85 excel, 93 play rec, 93 zone. You compare him to my Brian Dawkins that cost him about 100k. Brian Dawkins has better speed, pretty much the same excel, way better tackling, similar play rec if you just power, if you just cap him up, they both get threshold, better pursuit, worse man, worse zone, and way better hit power. So you can hit harder, he's faster, he's got better pursuit, he can tackle better, same excel. The only difference is that his zone slightly worse. But again, I blitz half the time anyway, so it doesn't really matter to me. It's just I was just an example of how Eddie Jackson is so overpriced for a card that could that can't even stand up against a 90 overall or an 89 overall powered up 100k card. Next on the list is a limited time team of the week here. They just dropped, and honestly, his stats are good in some places, but again, they killed him with one specific stat. That with the running back, when you kill that stat, all the other stats don't really matter, and that's his speed. 89 Excel is awesome, 90 carrying is awesome, 91 trucking is awesome, 90 break tackle is awesome. If they had just given him an 87 or an 88 speed, that's all he needed. But the 86 speed, I don't know, something about it. Like, if he had an 87 or an 88, he'd be awesome. 87 speed, I'd be like, okay, but 86 is like, there's outside linebackers just as fast as you. Linebackers are fast and you need, they don't have, he won't have that next gear. Like, he can't break runs all the way. He can, obviously, anyone can, but he can't consistently do it. Like, he has to get the right situ uh, situation for him. Compare him to Marcus Allen. He has good stats compared to Marcus Allen, but that plus two speed, the plus on the agility, the plus on the elusiveness, it just really makes the difference there that I can't really justify. And the trucking, the break tackle I really do like. But again, at a million coins, I don't think I could justify 86 speed player. Next on the list is going to be, let's see what we got. I believe it was, it was Devontae Adams. So Devontae Adams is a guy that I was really excited for to play with this year in this game, but they have not been so kind with his stats. You come down to his, he at least has a Redex card, like I said. So again, still able to be picked up. He's only 215K. But if you compare his stats, again, to DeAndre Hopkins, he's practically DeAndre Hopkins. They have the same speed, worse jumping. DeAndre Hopkins is better catching, same catch in traffic, similar spec catch, and similar route running. There's really, the only difference here is the deep route running is about the only thing he has better. But again, 215K, 110K. It's really a no brainer in that aspect once again. So for in that case, I'm off Devontae Adams. I think he is way overrated. Now, next on this list is a guy that I couldn't take off. 
I, I love making fun of this guy. People hated on it, but Zach Ertz, 250K for this tight end. 78 speed, 68 strength. 60 run block. Come on, I'm, that's it. That's all I gotta say. He can't run block. He's slow as hell, and he's not strong. Okay, he can catch. But literally, for this card to catch, he has to be wide open. And he, people have to not... Because if there's a guy on him, he most likely has manned him up or zoned him up because he's too slow to outrun anyone. So you have to find him in... Sp for him to make a big play, you have to find him in space to begin with. And I, that's any card in the game you could find. Like, people are like, yeah, but Zach Ertz makes good catches for me. Okay, yeah, he, what, wide open? He, he makes some standing still. Yeah, he can make a catch, but I, he doesn't make plays for me. And I think weekend league especially, you need big plays. You need guys that can... Make it easy for you, right? Zach Ertz is like a five yard, six yard, five yard, six yard, five yard, six yard, ten yards touchdown. Randy Moss or those other guys, or like George Kittle is a one pass, 80 yards. Like it, it's just so different. And for me, I'd much rather have Shannon Sharp for 330 and 80 more K than Zach Ertz, in my opinion. And now for the final card in the list, it actually is gonna be about 32 cards for the final card in the list. And that is the whole theme diamond promo. I think every card in this promo is overrated. I really do. And you know why? Because people are going to be like, well, you can power them up to a 90 overall. Okay, so spend 150k to power them up, and then what? Those cards suck in a month, and then they're not useful anymore, and then you lose training, and then they're not going to get any more upgrades anyways for the rest of the year. Or people say, oh, well, you can just buy them base. Like, let's just buy a Deuce McAllister base. Okay, so you have an 84 speed running back. I'll just stop there. Or how about Rob Ninkovich base? Okay, he hits literally no threshold besides possibly play rec. Or they say, okay, well, Chris McAllister, if he's pretty good, he has an 84 speed at cornerback, not usable anymore. Oh, and it gets even better, because as they get less usable, their price continues to go up. So guys like Jordan Garoff, left tackle, not even the best left tackle anymore, 275K. Uh, Joe Runyon, 360K right tackle. I just can't justify any of these. Matt Burke, where is he? Is he just genuinely just not on there? The theme diamonds are such... Their rarities went up, their prices went up, and their usabilities went down. I think, as a whole, I wouldn't even touch these theme diamond cards. I didn't touch them when they came out. I'm not touching them now, guys. But that is about it for the video. Any questions, concerns, or feedback, drop it down below in the comments. If you disliked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Thank you guys for watching. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on that noti bell. And that's all, guys. Thank you for watching. I'm out. See you guys in the next video. Peace.